Hi, my name is Claude, and after years of struggling to keep fit, I finally found a scientifically proven method that helped me get fit and stay that way. This is a story of how I lost 75 pounds and have maintained my fitness ever since. As a bonus, I also reduced my crippling joint pain and reduced my autoimmune symptoms. While this method involves some pretty drastic changes in my diet, these are changes that I personally find easy to maintain now that I'm through the transition period. I eat delicious filling and nutritious meals that sustain me for a long time. I never walk away from the table feeling like I didn't get enough to eat, and even the desserts are absolutely decadent. In fact, these meals are so satisfying that I sometimes forget to eat all day, whereas before I couldn't go more than a few hours without at least eating a snack. If you wish to try this method, the first thing you should do is consult your doctor. While that you're there, ask to get a baseline of your blood work done before you start. This will help you track your health markers and adjust your diet accordingly. You should get this done again every couple of months or according to your doctor's advice in order to track your progress. Now, here are the principles of nutrition that I learned about which I use to get fit. First, eat more fat. The best fuel for your body is saturated fat. Yes, that's right. The stuff that you have probably been told to avoid for the past 60 years. These can be found mainly in coconut oil, the white solid kind, and most animal fats, that is to say lard, butter or ghee, and suet. Stay away from hydrogenated vegetable oils and trans fats. Also, avoid cooking with unsaturated fats, such as canola and olive oil. It is better to consume them raw. And limit your intake of any oil made from grains and seeds, such as corn oil and sunflower oil. These are higher in omega-6 fatty acids and so tend to increase inflammation. While unsaturated fats are not as easily processed by the body for use as energy, some of them, such as olive oil and cod liver oil, offer many health benefits when consumed raw. So feel free to add them to your meals as part of a salad dressing, for example. Second, eat less carbs. Like way less carbs. Like almost none. That means no more bread, no more pasta. You even have to limit your consumption of some root vegetables such as carrots and potatoes. You can have a limited amount of berries or occasionally a half grapefruit, preferably before bed or before exercise. I know that for many people cutting sugar is a real challenge. It has been shown on brain scans that sugar stimulates the same parts of the brain as cocaine or heroin. But the craving for sugar does subside once you have transitioned your body to running on fats. Third. Eat big satisfying meals that don't leave you wanting more. Eat until you simply can't eat another bite. But then, spend a long time between meals without eating anything. Avoid snacking between meals and only eat when you are actually hungry. Don't confuse a temporary craving with actual hunger. The easiest way to do this is to set an eating window, for example, you skip breakfast and have your first meal between noon and one. You eat until you're full and then you have supper around six. If you filled up with a good meal, high in saturated fats at lunchtime, chances are you won't need a very big meal in the evening. You can finish off the day with a handful of wild berries. This will help you get a good night's sleep. Now let me explain in a simplified way how these changes in diet affect your body's metabolism and help you get fit. First, understand that as a general rule, your body gets better at whatever you ask it to do. This is the principle of adaptation. If you ask it to lift weights on a regular basis, your body will adapt to make this easier in time. If you ask your body to process fats as fuel instead of carbs and sugar, it will get better at it over time. As a bonus, once your body gets used to running on fats, 
it barely sees the difference between the fat that you eat and the fat that is stored on your body. It will transition between the two seamlessly, thus avoiding big drops in energy or big mood swings that come from running on carbs and sugar. Another downfall of running on carbs and sugar is that this raises insulin much more and over time can lead to insulin resistance. While insulin is crucial to balance glucose level in the blood and open the cells up to allow them to consume the nutrients, some people, such as myself, tend to have an exaggerated insulin response when consuming carbs. This makes it very easy to put on weight since insulin signals your body to store extra energy as body fat and inhibit glucagon, a hormone which releases that fat as fuel. So, a strong insulin response will cause a big part of your meal to be stored as fat for later use rather than be readily available as a source of energy. This means that before long, you will be hungry again. Your body can only use your stored body fat as fuel once the effects of the insulin has passed and is no longer inhibiting the release of glucagon. That is why it is better to have periods of fasting rather than small meals every couple of hours throughout the day. Once you fast long enough to get past your initial cravings, that feeling of urgency should subside and your energy level will even out. You will also notice an increase in mental clarity. These are the signs that your body has started burning fat for fuel. One of the byproducts of this process is called ketones, which are made by the liver and have a structure similar to glucose. These are made both from fats which you eat and fats on your body, and they will be used by your body as fuel. If you or those around you notice that your breath smells like some kind of petrochemical, that is a definite sign that you are burning your fat storages and producing ketones. This is usually referred to as keto breath. The hardest part of this lifestyle is by far the transition period when your body has not yet adapted to running mainly on fats, but is being deprived of the carbs and sugars. However, if you stick with it, you will reap the benefits. Make sure you drink plenty of water and have sufficient vitamins and minerals in your diet to stay healthy. Consult your doctor regularly and get yourself a good ketogenic cookbook because adding variety to your diet will help you stick to it. I hope this has been helpful. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel under the title Talk with Claude and share with your friends. You can also join the conversation on my website at talkwithclode.com. Also, please consider encouraging me financially so that I can keep producing helpful instructional videos by registering to patreon.com. From the bottom of my heart, thank you.